Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be focusing on locomotives that are grey. What's this title all about then? Should grey locomotives exist in model form? Well, there's quite a lot to consider in answering that question. So I thought I would kick off by giving you a personal answer. What do I think about this? Well, first of all, manufacturers produce grey locomotives and customers buy them. And more importantly, the customers enjoy those grey locomotives. So for me, yeah, of course, manufacturers should produce grey locomotives. Those models serve their intended purpose, that is to bring joy and entertainment. So yes, of course, they should exist. But are they prototypical? That is the bigger question. So take a look at this. This is the DJM 1361 locomotive. And it looks absolutely stunning, I think, in this grey livery. And at one time, many locomotives were painted into this livery, which was also known as works grey or photographic grey. The livery was used before colour photography was commonplace and it helped to show locomotives looking their absolute best and sharpest in photographs. The locomotive builders wanted to show off their machines, they wanted to sell these machines, so having them look their very best in photos was essential. And believe it or not, this still works today. I've purchased quite a few grey locomotives to photograph and review and whatnot, and sure enough, they do look fantastic on camera. I always really enjoy photographing these because they look so damn good. And even more interestingly, people watch the videos. Lots of people watch videos of grey locomotives and the models all seem to sell out quite quickly as well. So in a funny sort of way, the manufacturers of these models are doing exactly what those locomotive builders did over a hundred years ago. They're putting their models into these liveries because it helps to sell the engines. And frankly, it doesn't get any more authentic than that. Model manufacturers aping what the real locomotive builders did hundreds of years ago, I think that's awesome. The 1361 class was introduced in 1910, so long before colour photography was cheap and practical. Only five of these locos were actually produced. They were built at Swindon Works to the design of George Jackson Churchwood. They were intended for duties around docks and they were therefore designed to negotiate extremely tight curves. All five 1361s survived for over 50 years, although today only one remains in preservation. And the reason I picked this one to start with is because it's just a great, great example of photographic grey. It's one of the best looking ones. The contrasts on this loco are unbelievable and you can totally see why the locomotive builders chose to do this. I mean, look at the black of the smoke box there, and that borders with the much lighter colour of the running plate, the saddle tanks, and they even painted the top of the chimney into the grey colour as well. So no matter how terrible the cameras were back then, this loco was always going to show some decent contrast. And there's also some gorgeous lining on this thing as well. You've got the lining on the cylinders, you've got lining on the side of the cab, even the underside of the boiler has been lined as well. And so many different parts of this model stand out. I think it has to be the smoke box detailing, yeah, all of the handrails, the dart, all of the hinges and everything, those are all picked out in the grey. And of course the other areas of contrast would be the top of the cab there and also the steps. Yeah, it's just a great looking loco in the photographic grey. Probably one of the best examples I've got. And it does look strange, doesn't it, at the head of a freight train. It's a good runner and everything, good enough. But yeah, it's just, it's just odd. It's not what you imagine when you imagine a freight locomotive. But still, it's an engine I enjoy running. Uh, it seems reasonably popular in my requests and such. And because I'm not a strictly prototypical modeler, it doesn't bother me too much that this thing would never really have run in this livery, at least not with a, a freight train in normal service. No, to me that doesn't matter too much. It's just something I enjoy running and it's a bit of something different at the end of the day. This is not the sort of livery that you'd expect to see on a Great Western tank engine. And I've always enjoyed that about it. 
So most likely when you buy a locomotive in photographic grey, it is largely prototypical. Although they wouldn't have run in that livery, they would have been painted over into whatever other livery they would run in before being released from the works. So actually, if you're buying a photographic grey loco to run, that's probably not that prototypical, but ultimately the liveries did exist. Another example of that is the Garrett. And I guess with these, it's easier to assume that these would not have been running in this livery. I mean, these are clearly such massive, filthy machines. If these actually went out into service like this, hauling freight trains, I'm sure they would spend more time being cleaned than actually being used. But still, it's a fascinating locomotive nevertheless. The first LMS Garretts were ordered from Bayer Peacock and Company and they were built in 1927. The LMS decided to employ such huge locomotives, 260 plus 260, due to the fact that they had previously had to double or even triple head locomotives in order to haul their larger trains, which obviously was very uneconomical. So a total of 33 of these were built for heavy freight duties between 1927 and 1930, and they did have relatively short working lives. All examples had been withdrawn and scrapped by 1958 with no survivors. And this is a much simpler livery than the 1361 we saw, there isn't any lining or anything on this one, yet people still love this loco. It still flew off the shelves and people still flocked to my video of this thing to come and see it. It's still got some of those stark contrasts. You've still got the black smoke box, which really contrasts with the rest. And you've got the black chassis as well, which does the same thing. You've also got the lower firebox, which is brilliant white. How impractical would that have been in real life? Incredibly so. Your prototypical realistic modelers probably aren't going to be running this thing, but still plenty of people do. And if the 1361 looked a bit strange with a freight train, then the Garrett looks very, very odd indeed. I think it's just easy to tell that a big, beefy, massive freight loco like this just shouldn't be in an almost white livery. It just belongs in a black or something like that, doesn't it? To the point where I think if a serious modeler with a super detailed layout accurately modeling the LMS, popped this thing onto their layout with a freight train. Even a complete novice would be able to tell that something was amiss here. And obviously the Garrett was never supposed to be seen like this, but at the same time it was supposed to be seen like this. It was painted in this livery so that lots of people would see it and think it was cool, but at the same time it was only supposed to be seen in black and white. Certainly wasn't supposed to go out onto the network like this, but again, it's still a model I enjoy running, it's still a model that people want to see. Realistic or not, it still kind of works from that point of view. But what about if a manufacturer wants to get a bit creative? Because after all, these old black and white photos don't really tell us anything at all about the actual colour of these locos. We don't really know what shades of grey were used. We sometimes don't even know whether they really were grey or perhaps they were a light green or something. But does that really matter? I picked up this Peckett from Hornby. This was the centenary Peckett and it looks absolutely fantastic in the grey. But it's unclear how accurate this livery is. We have no way of knowing how accurate this grey colour is. And I can't find any photos of this particular loco looking like this in what could have been a grey livery. But again, does it really matter? These seem to sell very well. My video was popular. They're not in stock anymore and I don't think they have been for a while. So again, the models sold regardless of the accuracy of the livery. People just liked the look of it. They wanted it and they bought it. So sure, of course it should exist. The Peckett W4 was first introduced in 1885 and they were built by Peckett and Sons in Bristol for the next 20 years or so. Peckett and Sons mainly produced locomotives for collieries, ironworks or similar industrial premises. They did this successfully for many, many years until 1958 when their last ever steam locomotive was produced. And I think this has to be my favourite example of the photographic grey. It is just so ornate, it is gorgeous. It's unclear whether Hornby managed to find some actual photos of this thing to recreate the livery from, or whether they just took some artistic licence and went crazy on this thing. 
Either way, it doesn't matter too much. I think if they did get creative with this and add all of the lining and the different shades of grey, then fine, because it's very much in the spirit of those old locomotive builders that just made their locos look as great as possible for those photos. Equally, you can totally imagine a manufacturer of industrial locomotives in real life really tarting up the liveries of their locos because obviously this was not built by the LMS or the LNER. These guys had to sell these locos to industries, so the better they looked, the more likely they were to make a sale. But either way, it doesn't matter too much because this thing looks great. You've got so much lining on this one, as you can see. All of the lettering is done in yellow. The lining itself is so incredibly intricate, even down to the cylinders. And the smoke box is painted into this almost off-white, very light grey with the silver smoke box dart and hinges and everything. And the handrails and such are all done in the chrome colour. You've got a little bit of copper and brass work on the chimney, on the dome and even on the window frames and the sides of the cab. There's just a lot going on here that comes together to make this one of the most beautiful liveries in my entire collection, never mind of the low coats that are grey. And while I think photographic grey looks very strange with a freight train, as soon as you put a suitable passenger train behind them, like these Pullmans, suddenly it just looks like a passenger special or something like that, and it kind of works. That's not to say it's prototypical, I don't think you would have photographic grey locos hauling passenger trains around but yeah it just it's a little bit more believable somehow isn't it and these hornby peckets are fantastic performers i love the way these run good and powerful of course because of all that weight and even the hornby peckets that are not in the photographic gray are just lovely lovely things to own in a way you don't really need the gray to have a beautiful livery on a pecket you can get one of the other equally colorful liveries and run those more prototypically. So again, the only reason you would want this <laughs> would be just because it looks cool. And uh, I, I knew I wanted it as soon as I saw it and I do not regret buying it. Still one of my favorite photographic gray locos. So many steam locomotives did exist in gray liveries, even if it was just for a time. But what about locos that actually went out into the world in gray liveries? Well, these are rarer but there are some examples. I think a massive example has to be this, and massive is the word. This is the Hush Hush in a very, very striking dark LNER livery, and I think the fact that this was quite dark was possibly the key to this livery, because it would have been more durable than those much lighter greys, the almost white, for instance, of the Garrett. Yeah, this would have been easier to maintain, and it wouldn't look quite as bad with a little bit of soot on it as the lighter liveries would. And again, these flew off the shelves. The value of these soared. Everybody was after them. People certainly don't have a problem with grey liveries, do they? Uh, it's probably more to do with the prototype, but still, people obviously liked the livery. Officially known as the LNER Class W1, the Hush Hush locomotive got its nickname because, as an experimental locomotive, it was actually kept a secret during development. A unique locomotive, both in looks and in the fact that only one was ever built. So why not have an oddball livery too? It was apparently originally painted in the grey, which was extremely striking and left nobody in any doubt as to what a radical new machine this was. Despite all of this, steaming was relatively poor during tests and the loco never really met the standards required. As such, no more examples were ever produced and the existing W1 was rebuilt in Doncaster Works in 1936 with a conventional boiler and an even more conventional livery, only seven years after having been constructed. She was then sadly scrapped in 1959, thus eliminating any remains of Gresley's experiment. And this livery is very different to all of the others we've seen so far today. Obviously, it is much darker, but I think also the purpose of it was very different as well. This livery was not intended to sell Hush Hush locomotives. Gresley wasn't trying to peddle them off to different industries for obvious reasons, but perhaps rather he was trying to sell his design. Perhaps he was trying to create excitement around the Hush Hush and the unconventional design work on the inside. So perhaps he was just trying to get this sort of thing accepted by engineers and the public. The livery itself, though, is quite lovely, isn't it? You've got this very, very strange body with the very dark grey on it. 
silver lining, big thick bands as well. You've got none of your intricate finery here. This is a massive beast and the livery really helps to show it. The running number and the L and E R lettering are all in the white. And there are quite a few white accents all over this as well. I guess the lamps are good examples. They stand out quite nicely as well. So it's a very, very different sort of livery, isn't it? But still an extremely popular one among modelers. And of course, when the hush hush runs, even in the gray, there's a certain believability about it. I don't know whether that's because this livery was intended to go into service. I don't know whether it's because it just happens to look right with passenger rolling stock. But this is something for me that just doesn't look weird when you run it like some of the photographic greys do. Which is strange because clearly the hush hush is quite weird. <laughs> it's weird in every way. So I suppose in that case the livery is the least weird thing about the hush hush. Maybe that's why it works, I don't know. But yeah, it's a lovely run of this one. Much better than that first one I had. Does a great job of hauling a nice long passenger train at a good speed. Yeah, it's a wonderful loco. Uh, again, one of the best grey locos out there, I think. Yeah, I love it. What a great loco. What a great livery. Another example of locomotives actually going out into service in grey liveries would be the SECR. I've got this P-Class and for a long time I think I thought this was a photographic grey livery, but apparently it's not. I don't know too much about this livery in service, but apparently, at least for a time, these P-Class locos were in a grey. It's a very, very smart grey livery. I think probably a freight livery, most likely. Again, I don't know how practical this livery would have been, but noticeably it is quite a bit darker than some of the greys we've seen today. The SECR P-Class was designed by Harry Wainwright and it was introduced in 1909. These attractive tank engines were an attempt to imitate the very successful Terrier locos from the LBSC, which were extremely capable locomotives. However, the P-Class was an underpowered design which produced less than three quarters the tractive effort of the Terriers. As a result, the P-Class ended up doing just shunting and other light duties, and only eight examples were ever made, in stark contrast with the 50 Terriers that were built. Nevertheless, four examples do remain under preservation today. And this is also a very interesting grey livery. I think you can tell that this has not really been put together just for photography's sake, because the contrasts are less extreme here, I think possibly because the shade of grey is quite dark. And things like the white running number on the grey background would not necessarily have stood out too great on black and white photographs. But still, as a grey livery in its own right, I think this is great. I love the shade of grey, actually. It's kind of elegant in a way. And it's still accented quite nicely by the window frames, which are that sort of brassy colour. You've got the SECR plate and the builder's plate as well, which all look good. I love the way the wheels match the livery as well, except the coupling rod is a sort of shiny metal colour. That looks lovely. You've still got the black smoke box, of course, but all the detailing is just black. It hasn't been painted into vastly contrasting colours. Really, this is just such a departure from the more traditional greens that you would normally expect to see on SECR. Yeah, I just love it. What a great, great livery. So here it comes now, the P-Class with some passenger coaches. Uh, I decided to go with the passenger coaches, the uh, Genesis ones, just because I've only ever run those with the green P-Class so far, not the grey one, and I wanted to see how it looks. It actually looks really cool, doesn't it? I don't know why the grey matches with the red coaches so nicely, but I think it really, really does. And again, there's, there is a believability about this one, I think, that I think must just come from the fact that this is a, a darker grey and you can imagine it surviving the elements a little bit better than the whiter ones. But yeah, it's beautiful loco, looks great with passenger coaches or freight. I often run it with freight as well. Gorgeous, gorgeous loco. Another one of my favourites. A lot of my favourites are grey, I am noticing that. The final and most obvious point in favour of grey locomotives is of course modern times. Today we don't use coal anymore, coal was messy, it created soot, it would have messed up a light grey livery, but to date there's none of that. We use diesel which is a lot cleaner than coal, and some locos of course are electric so there's no messy fuel anywhere near the locomotive. And that has given rise to so many different grey locos, rail freight grey, that's so common to see. I bet you never thought I'd be mentioning that in this video, but sure, grey locos today are very common. 
but I've gone with one as an example that's perhaps a little bit less common. I've picked this one, the Sentinel. Almost white in areas, but there's definitely a good bit of grey on it. And this thing was the complete opposite to the messy Steam Locos I've been showing you so far. This loco in real life was not out there in the wind and the rain. It was not getting coal soot all over it. It was working at Hitachi indoors, shunting their passenger carriages around. And so this wonderful light, bright livery was probably perfectly maintainable. The Sentinel diesel shunters were built by the Sentinel Wagon Works, who started building diesel shunters in 1959. As the years went on, several different designs were made available by the company, including minor variations such as those with different engines inside, and major variations such as those with extra wheels. Some were produced in the 060 wheel configuration, of course. This example was built in 1962, and it is currently used for shunting by Hitachi following its overhaul in 2007. And this does not look like a locomotive that was built in the early 1960s. Obviously, this is a much, much more recent livery, and they've really gone out of their way to make this thing look cool. I would say that the grey is still the main colour of this livery, but there's obviously a lot more colour in this livery. And I like to imagine that this livery was optimised for modern digital cameras with all of their colour and saturation because if you look up photos of this loco in real life, it looks awesome in modern photos. So yes, you've got the almost white of the bonnets, you've got the much darker, almost hush-hush grey of the cabs, but then you've got the red and black wasp striping. Is it wasp striping anymore now? I, I guess not if it's red and black, but still, how awesome does that look? You have got the wasp striping on either end, which also looks fantastic. You've got the red coupling rods and counterweights, You've got the white of the various steps and handrails, and also the plain white of the Hitachi brand there and their little motto. And all of this is contrasted with a little bit of black down on the chassis. I think it's definitely one of the more interesting liveries of the day, that's for sure. This one's a little bit harder to recreate in terms of putting it with some realistic rolling stock, but... Yeah, if you try to imagine this thing hauling coaches around a big indoor railway building or shed, yeah, this one doesn't seem too strange at all. I think the livery sort of makes sense for what this loco is supposed to be doing. And of course, the livery here transforms an old locomotive from the 1960s into something quite modern looking. There's not much about this loco externally that really gives away its age. Even the sort of 1960s design of the body is quite well hidden, isn't it, with the modern colours and livery. It's a very, very interesting loco indeed. So what do you think about grey locomotives? What is your favourite grey livery? Do you prefer the old-fashioned photographic grey or do you prefer the more modern grey liveries that we see on diesels? Should manufacturers be producing models in photographic grey? Should they take some artistic license and put random locos into greys just because they look good and people will want them? Let me know what you think down in the comments. For now though, that is all I have on grey locomotives. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you very, very soon for another video. All right, cheers folks, take care.